across the way. She tossed and turned for over an hour, unable to sleep. And then as she turned towards the window at about 12.10, she looked out and she saw the boy kill his father. To me, this is unshakable testimony. That's what I mean. That's the whole case. Frankly, in view of this, I don't see how you can vote for acquittal. What do you think about it? Well, maybe. But there's just so much evidence to sift through. What do you mean, maybe? He's absolutely right. You could throw out all that other evidence. That was my feeling. Look, I don't deny the validity of what you said. But what do you say about the story of this woman? She saw it happen. Oh, no, my watch stopped. What time is it? Uh, it's 10 minutes to 6. Do you think they'd let us go home early and come back in the morning? <laughs> no. I've got a kid at home with the mumps. <laughs> Not no. a chance. <laughs> um, can't you see the clock over there without your glasses on? Mm, no, not clearly. Oh. Glasses are a nuisance, aren't they? Oh, boy. Well, what do you do when you wake up in the middle of the night and want to know what time it is? Oh, I, I just put my glasses on, look at the clock. I just lay in bed and wait for the clock to chime. My dad gave it to me when we married, my wife and I. And it was over 10 years before we had a place to put it. Aww. Well, do you wear your glasses to bed? <coughs> of course not. Nobody wears their glasses to bed. Well, what about the woman who testified she saw the killing? She wears glasses. What about her? Did she wear glasses? Of course. She wore bifocals. I remember this very clearly. They look quite strong. That's right, bifocals. She yes. never took them off. I think it's logical to say that this woman did not wear her glasses to bed. And I don't think she put them on just to glimpse out the window. She testified that she saw the killing the instant she looked out the window. And one second later, the lights went out. I don't think she had time to put on her glasses. Now. In all honesty, this woman may think she actually <coughs> saw the boy kill his father. But I say it was only a blur. How do you know what she saw? Maybe she's farsighted. How does she know these things? Does anyone else here think there is not a reasonable doubt? Reasonable doubt? Reasonable doubt. That's all you've given us all night. Reasonable doubt. I give up. You got it. Reasonable doubt. No, I'm convinced. There is reasonable doubt. Well, I think he's guilty. Anybody else? You're all alone. All right. It's 11 votes, not guilty, one. I don't care if I'm alone or not, I have a right. Yes, you have a right. Well, I told you, I think he's guilty. What else do you want? Your arguments. I gave you my arguments. We're not convinced. We're waiting to hear them again. We have time. Look, what's the matter with you? You ought to die. You made all the arguments. You can't turn now. A guilty man's going to be walking the streets, a murderer. He's got to die. Stay with me. Look, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm convinced. I, I don't think I'm wrong often, but I guess I was this time. There is a reasonable doubt in my mind. We're waiting. You're not going to intimidate me. I'm entitled to my opinion. It's going to be a hung jury. That's it. There's nothing we can do about that except hope that maybe some night, maybe a few months from now, you'll be able to get some sleep. You're all alone. It takes a great deal of courage to stand alone. Look, if it's a hung jury, there's just going to be another trial. Some of us will point these things out to the various lawyers.
They're waiting. Not guilty! Can I get out quick? We're not getting out quick. Not no, guilty. Not. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the cast of 12 Angry Jurors, Suzanne Bowden and Carol Iskro. Nancy Niakos and Debbie Quinn. Joan Beach and Janet New. Carolyn Dillard and Paul Mattis. Jim Glenn and Burl Achievit. Rick Myers. Maggie Shell and Tommy Collins. Now technical director Jim Worth and Bonnie Worth on sound. Wonderful director Dudley to come on. Up. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, if you don't think I'm happy, you're nuts. <laughs> <laughs> what an incredible cast. We have been working very, very hard since the first of January, and these people literally threw their hearts into this magnificent play. I love this play. In fact, it was the first thing we did in Heritage Pines 15 years ago. I played the advertising executive, and I was just as obnoxious as she is. And Paul Mattis directed. And since then, we have entertained you with many, many different uh, uh, shows and, and venues. Uh, I got to tell you, this cast really, really appreciates your support. This is absolutely wonderful yes. to see yeah. this many yeah. people yeah. come out. This is by no means an easy play to do. Some of the actors had to wait two or three pages before they said another line. Yeah. And if you don't think that's difficult, yeah. it is really difficult. What we would like every one of you to do not tonight, but first thing tomorrow morning, phone your friends and tell them to come out and see this magnificent production. Once again, thank you. God bless you. Get home safely.